welcome to where are we? Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Christchurch. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fast until we have arrived at the gate and the captain switched off the fast seatbelt sign. Now it's pouring with rain and I'm heading out on a five day trip to the South Island of New Zealand. The weather forecast is rain for the whole country for the next seven days. But I'm still going as I have to start planning for running workshops. And I also need to get my camera back from the repair agent in Christchurch. And I'm looking forward to getting the old camera back. Christchurch is a really cool city full of really positive people. 2011 saw Christchurch decimated by a couple of massive earthquakes and it's still rebuilding itself today. I don't even recognise this airport here. And the roading network? Well that still catches out the odd taxi driver too. Where is the way Raki Now no sooner are you out of the city than the country starts opening up, showing you what it's got to offer. There's just beautiful scenery all around you. And I'm going to head to Mount Cook because this is the only corner of the country that's forecast to be dry today. The objective being to get there for a sunset. Lake Tekepo. The colour? Amazing. And it's confirmed here by Google Maps. Now New Zealand's one of these places that the deeper you venture into it, the more spectacular it becomes. It's just amazing. A Ukrainian photographer told me quite recently, this country, it hurts my brain. Welcome to Mount Cook National Park. Goodness, look at, look at this. <laughs> this is incredible. There's mountains at 3,000 metres. There's a glacial lake. There's a glacier. There's icebergs in the lake. And I'm here. I've got 10 minutes of light left. And I've actually got no plan. <laughs> this is stunning. Where do I start? Where do I start with this? Now I have a style of taking photos and I usually research and plan what I'm going to take quite well but this trip I actually need to do this one with my eyes wide open. That's cool. That's cool. And this approach actually feels a little foreign to me but it's actually a really good exercise and it's actually energising. I try and get to my locations early to be able to connect to the landscape before I take them but that was hard to connect to because I actually got there late but also too because it's just so vast. I also usually like to work for my photographs by walking some distance in but this road and that car park it's actually only 10 minutes away which spoiled that a pretty bit for me but maybe the car park and the path are there because it's so stunning. Now that's food for thought. So I've been up to the, uh, the glacier view up at um, Tasman Lake tonight at Mount Cook and uh, the weather uh, up ahead you can see it's partly cloudy so about 50% cloud cover and that didn't allow us a full view of the, um, of the mountain tonight which is really disappointing. Uh, New Zealand's highest mountain, too high tonight, it was above the clouds. Um, had a few problems getting here though, <coughs> got delayed at the car hire place and Got delayed at the camera shop picking up my camera. It's been so long since I had my camera, I can't actually even remember how to use it. So I was fumbling about in the half dark as the light was going, trying to remember how I shoot video and how I shoot time lapse and how I shoot shots and how I adjust ISOs and never ending problems tonight. So it 
it's uh, currently about three degrees here so it's getting cold and I'm gonna have to go and get wrapped up and um, get a good night's sleep because I've been on the go this morning since about five o'clock and it's currently quarter past nine so it's been a long day so being a long day I'm gonna bid you adieu and uh, we'll speak to you tomorrow morning but here's these photographs Good morning. It's uh, some unearthly hour, like um, about half past three in the morning. And uh, the reason it's so early is that uh, there's about an hour and a half, <coughs> there's about an hour and a half uh, walk up Hooker Valley track to get to the Hooker Valley Glacier. And um, sunrise this morning is up at uh, half past five, quarter to six. So I'm gonna have to get a move on. Um, but it's pitch black, so I'm going to have to torch it the whole way there. Um, up above, I can see that we've actually got uh, clear skies this morning. And uh, there's remnants of moonlight. And all around me I can see um, snow-capped hills. And I can actually see Mount Cook this morning. Which is actually pretty stunning this morning. There's some real light cloud in the sky. Real light uh, layers of cloud. Just up above Mount Cook. So at sunrise, hopefully that will catch some colour. So we might be get something this morning uh, whereas last night we couldn't see the top this morning we can so we'll see what we can find this this walk is supposed to be quite stunning um, and even if I don't get it there get right there for sunrise there's got to be a photo opportunity along the way so looking forward to doing this it's actually pretty cold this morning so it's been uh, starry skies all night and, uh, Filming in black and white. It can't be. So an hour and a half later, um, arrived at Hooker Lake, and <clears throat> no sooner have I set the camera up than the mountain has disappeared amongst the cloud. It seems to have a bit of a mind of its own. Um, I stopped just about 400 metres back uh, up the path to take a photograph of. Um, took a photograph standing on a big rock to try and get the first of the, the sunlight as it was just starting to come up. So, timed the, the walk well, but just unfortunate that um, I'm not going to have what I need to have for a shot just now, but it's still quite grey. Of avalanche rocks around here. This is all avalanche rocks. And just maybe two minutes ago, um, had a massive uh, avalanche up that way, and it sounded more like rocks than it did snow. Had one earlier on in the northwest, about 10, 15 minutes ago, and that was more like snow. But that one was quite loud and chunky. So all these rocks are here because there's been avalanches. So I don't know if we should stay here or not. But I'm going to get set up and, and see what I can find. There's just nothing here. Now there's always a shot somewhere, you just need to find it. We're trying different things. You often have to work a location really hard when the opportunities don't just fall at your feet. And no one said that doing landscape photography 
was going to be easy. Now other photographers, they've arrived this morning and they've left again almost straight away but I'm going to push on through because you certainly can't get an image if you're not here. Struggling. So the time is, uh, it feels really late but it's actually only quarter to seven. <clears throat> I have sat here for about an hour trying to get stuff and the clouds completely shrouded in and it's not going to lift and this is a really messy scene with all this this rock fall from from landslips and stuff and it's there's only two pieces of ice in the in the lake this morning which is quite unusual I thought um, Hooker Lake was going to be full of ice but there's only two um, there's some nice light behind me with some of these uh, these hills but not enough to take a photograph so I've really struggled here and what I did find is that the ice wide open approach it's great because it allows you to see the location you're in completely differently I ended up taking a random shot, a different one for me, but not much else here to take. I'm going to head back to the camper van, it's about an hour and a half back, um, and hopefully get some nice footage on the way back, because uh, it's completely dark when we came here. So. Now I've set up to watch these clouds for a while and it's clear that they're not going to shift anytime soon. So I'm going to head back these last few kilometres to get back to base. En route though I did look behind me at one point and I actually found what I've been looking for all morning. Snow covered mountains in direct light, high above the clouds and bright blue sky behind. Tripod down, camera out, big lens on. <laughs> And let's see what this looks like. Now one of the first things I noticed here was the high vertical faces of aqua coloured snow and ice. Now this is a long long way away and these faces must be at least 30 to 50 metres high. And these are the things that avalanches are made of. The one issue with doing a panorama with this type of Alpine scenery is, where do I start and where do I stop? And I thought that five horizontals was about right. This was incredible. The lengths we go to to try and get either sites for workshops or, or shots for taking photographs from the bottom, down by the bridge where I was before, this, um, this hill looked quite tempting and <laughs> looked quite close. But because of the, the scale of the mountains, it was actually a good half hour and jabbed myself on bush and stuff. But this is, this is what we're seeing from the top here. It's, uh, the mountains are about the top and then this glacial lake. And then this mountain. But as for taking other people up here, I don't think I can probably do that because it's, it's over 45 degrees to get up here and it's taken a lot of effort to try and climb the top, so... Right. I'll vlog the last part of this if I'm still alive by the time I get to the bottom. Well, we did of course make it, but I was trying to get to four locations at Mount Cook. Uh, these were Tasman Lake, which I went to last night. Hooker Lake this morning, but also Seely Tarns and Muller Hut. But I have a good friend who is an Antarctic expedition leader who was quite concerned for me going into the mountains and uh, suggested that I contact the Department of Conservation before I went in. So I did that. I spoke to the dock staff with regards to my plans, particularly to go to Muller Hut at 2,300 metres, and they said, no, don't do it. And the reason they said that was there's been a fresh dump of snow on top of already formed ice. So the surface is unstable, the risk of avalanche is extreme, and it's just not safe, and the paths have been lost, so... Not even any point going to Silly Tarns, because it's quite a bit into the cloud line as well, so I wouldn't see anything. So sadly, that's all from Mount Cook. Maybe next time I'll get further up the hill, um, 
Where to from here? I don't know because there's actually no plan. It may be Wanaka, Queenstown, Twisel. I don't know. Until then, see where we end up next time. Keep shooting. <laughs> see ya. Now the day after filming this, a hiker was killed at Mount Cook in an avalanche. The alpine environment, anywhere in the world, it's dangerous. And it needs to be respected and treated with caution. <laughs>